So it's my pleasure to introduce Jason Folds today. Jason, yeah. <laughs> Elisa is so psyched. I got a <laughs> He's all of our students. Jason has been here two years, but has clearly made an impact on all of us. <laughs> Jason has an, uh, originally has a degree in digital media uh, in, and worked in that field, uh, working for a school district in Florida, running a TV station for them for many years. And about three years ago, he and his wife picked up and moved to North Carolina. They have a homestead in Marion, just outside of Marion. And one of the stipulations, I was talking to him leading up to this, one of the stipulations of finding the right house when they were moving here was, will the covenant allow chickens? No, will the covenant allow chickens? Uh, there were times that uh, they just didn't even go to see a place if the covenant wouldn't allow chickens because this was important. Uh, Jason and Christine really wanted to raise chickens, and uh, so they got they found the right place. They brought uh, they got some chickens and soon discovered that they adored chickens, uh, that they loved them dearly, and you'll see that love throughout this presentation. It's delightful to see Jason um, taking that passion in, and, 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 and embedding it into his Ensor's research, which is looking at what makes hens pick the, uh, the, the nest boxes that they do, and if there, are, uh, if there are any accoutrements like curtains that might help. So we'll let Jason tell that story to us. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank everyone, especially those who weren't forced to be here. Um, yes, I'm trying to figure out whether chickens prefer curtains over their nesting boxes or no curtains over their nesting boxes. That sounds simple, but that's what I'm doing. So these are my girls. So why curtains? Because um, as Grissom et al found the natural nesting conditions for the chickens that they studied, which were prairie chickens in Texas, prefer hollowed out humps or some, uh, some ground cover. You can see some eggs, there's an egg there, there's a couple eggs there that my wonderful chickens left me to find. Uh, this was a hollowed out stump and we thought that the chicken wasn't laying, but we found this one day and it's like, wow, so that's where, so we named her Stumpy. But, <laughs> This is kind of their natural habitat. Oh, and they also lay eggs in the bumper of my Jeep. You know, so <laughs> they have a lot of personality. <laughs> so I'm sure most of you know that battery chickens that produce eggs are housed in these kind of uh, terrible, in my opinion, terrible way. They, uh, they're overcrowded. And a study by Pull and Chain showed that the battery chickens actually had a decreased bone density because of the conditions that they were living in. So they wanted to see if they could make the battery chickens a little more comfortable and perhaps increase their health. So they, they did something called uh, enrichment, and I'll explain that in a second, but they found that the enriched chickens had higher body weight and higher egg weight. So they might have been onto something. So the enrichment, sorry about this picture, this is the only picture they had in their study, but they enriched it with roosts, which is where the chickens will go at night to sleep. They have a dust bath, which chickens would use to clean, to keep themselves uh, mite, bug-free, and the skin condition not oily. Then, the biggest thing that I, I really liked was the nesting area, where they, they put a, um, a, a concealment area so that the chickens would actually have to go under the concealment, which is right here, and into the nesting box behind it, so they had a little concealment which is kind of like it would be in nature, sort of, but they're still in this wire cage. So, this is my, my coop, and the nesting box is inside. I thought, judging by the information that I've read, that they would enjoy the curtains. So my hypothesis is that they will lay more, more eggs in the, in the boxes that have the curtains, because it, it is similar to the, the natural nesting material. So the study was um, fairly straightforward. Uh, I did this for 56 days in the summer of 2017. I had 25 hens at the time, um, eight boxes. Uh, I checked for eggs multiple times a day. I'll explain why in a few minutes. And then each box was one square foot. It had a rubber welcome mat material at the bottom to keep the eggs from cracking when they dropped them sometimes. Uh, the curtains were covering the boxes 
about two thirds, so about eight inches of the 12 inch opening. And the curtains were red. We already had red curtain up at the time that I started the, the study. But then I found this, um, this study by Taskin et al, where they actually studied, do chickens prefer red curtains, yellow curtains, green curtains, or blue curtains? So by far, they, they preferred red curtains by 36%. And I already had red curtains up, so serendipitously, I had the right color curtains. So here's the nesting boxes. Just line them up, not, uh, numbered them one, two, three, four, five, Matilda, six, seven, and eight. And this is where I collected eggs every day, three, four times a day. Um, I'll talk about the roosts in a little bit, the, the part that she's standing on. So there are a couple things I needed to, to watch out for. Um, broody behavior, which is this, and gregarious nesting, which this could be. Um, broody, broody behavior, according to Richard Yarkin's et al. study, is when the hormonal level of the chicken, of the hen, rises to a point where they feel the need to be a, mo a mommy. So what they'll do is they'll find a big clutch of eggs and they'll lay on it and they will not let you get those eggs and they will sit there for three, four weeks until the babies come out and hatch. So that would be a problem if they were taking up one box that's only have eight boxes and no other chickens were allowed to lay in that box. So I would check and if we had a broody hen, which Cleo was a lot, I would have to take her out, put her in a specialized carrier, uh, cage for a couple of days, which would bring down her um, her temperature, and that uh, keeps the, uh, the hormone, it keeps it from producing, and then they go back to the normal behavior of laying an egg every day, every other day. She probably went broody four times during this, so I had to keep her out of the, out of the mix quite a bit. We did at the end, after the study, we did let her have some babies, and there's the babies right there. And then we have various nesting, which according to the Appleby et al. study, is where uh, chickens are, are pretty social, so when they see eggs in a nest, they will be drawn to that nest to lay their own eggs. So to try to keep this from happening, which would really skew the results a lot, I checked eggs three, four times a day to try to keep a buildup of eggs out of boxes so that they wouldn't use the social nesting behavior. And uh, this one is copper and bluey. They were, I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> they're friends though. So here's what I got. My top row, one, two, three, four is on top. Bottom row is on the bottom. You may see a trend. Um, 587 eggs in 56 days, and yeah, you, you might see a trend. <laughs> so what are we going to do about this trend? First, we did a bit of man with EU test. I did the man with EU because the um, the eggs were not uh, distributed evenly. So the man with EU is is more able to deal with an uneven distribution. Plus there are a lot of zeros in the data, and so for each, each box each day I'm putting a number, one box might have six zeros in a, in a row. So I went with the main with you, thanks to Robert X team for pointing that out. For the curtains versus no curtains, I got a p-value of 0 0.089. So there's a marginal significance as to whether they, they prefer curtains over no curtains. This rejects the null hypothesis because they aren't um, even across the board. Then I did a chi-squared to see you know, if they were even, and obviously it's the p-value less than 0 0.01. So that shows over the total number of boxes over each box, eight boxes, there's definitely not a uh, normal or an even distribution. So then I did, as, as you saw, you saw the, the raw data, a lot of them on top, I mean, a lot of them on the bottom and a lot on the top. So when you do the man with me on the top versus bottom, the p-value is less than 0 0.01. And you might see a bigger trend here. So yes, they preferred the bottom in the study over the top. So then I did a chi-squared on the bottom nesting boxes, five through eight, and they were definitely not evenly distributed either. So our p-value is less than 0 0.01. So the last man with me I did was the bottom four boxes, curtain boxes versus non-curtain boxes, and I got a p-value of 0 0.0029, and there is a statistical significance that they prefer the box without the curtain, so that surprised me quite a bit. Um, 
it didn't surprise me by looking at the raw day, but so they like they like box number five a lot for some reason. And five and seven accounted for fifty two percent of all the eggs I collected. So yeah, that, the study the study definitely needs to go further. So I think one of the confounding variables I thought I had was before I started this study, this is what the boxes looked like. I had a roost on the bottom, no roost on the top. And I was seeing from my previous data that most of the eggs were on the bottom. So I was thinking, okay, so this is a certain distance from the ground. Maybe they're just lazy and they don't want to fly way up there. So I decided to add a roost to the top. So this roost is, you can see it's offset a little bit. So for a human eye, it looks like, okay, so you can jump to this roost, jump to this roost, and step into the box. But when you get down here and you actually look at it from the bird's view, this is an obstacle. So I didn't catch that before. I don't know if I would have changed it anyway because I still thought I needed to do something to make it more normal so that both the top and the bottom would be the same for them. But I guess that could be one of the reasons they like the bottom better than the top. They're just lazy and that's closest. I don't know. Um, my conclusion is there is some evidence that they preferred the, uh, the, the non-curtain boxes, but as you can see, I only had eight boxes. I think that they need to go further. If you really wanted to do this, this uh, study and, and get a good, a really good study result, I think you would need maybe 20 boxes all at the same height and then put the curtains in randomly, make everything so it's all the same height. I think that is the biggest, the biggest problem for them. Uh, this is Stumpy again. Stumpy's the one that was laying in the stump. She will now come to the front door, make noise. We open the door, she'll walk into the cat tree and lay her egg there for us. <laughs> that happens a lot, actually. So anyway, chickens will do what they want to do. Um, I want to dedicate this to 11 of our birds. After that we lost. After the study, dog came through and took out 10. This is Goldie, Cleo, and Drumstick. Some of the babies there. So keep your dog locked up. I want to thank Bob, Liesel, and Thomas for keeping me on track with the statistics. I know they know how hard that is to me. And also pushing me to, uh, to get it straight. <laughs> uh, my wife and my mom pushed me to go back to school and give me all the encouragement I need. All of you, because this community is awesome and a lot of you really help me a lot. And I love what you guys are doing. And of course, past and present staff and faculty, when I first started here, it was kind of tough being a 47-year-old geezer. And <laughs> To have staff and faculty more my age to talk to really helped me a lot. Uh, Judy, Judy Huber, for one, who's no longer here, but she did tell, you, tell me to tell you guys hi. She's in Ohio right now with the job interview. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll take them. different breed compositions yes. of your, your chickens enrolled in the study. Have you seen in any of the literature any type of laying behavior that's different between different breeds of chickens? No, the, the laying behavior, the only one I saw that was different between different breeds were white and brown egg layers that they did for the, the curtain study with the different colors, but they didn't see a difference between the brown and the, egg, and the white egg layers. So I, I didn't think that would be a huge deal because I'm really only I'm only interested in number laid right. per box, so I'm not actually, I don't know who's laying which one because I have, you know, 20 breeds. Right. Oh, I love this quiet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that total number at the end of the summer is like 578? Is that typical for you? Did you see like an overall increase? 587 <laughs> was the total. Um, we were getting, I think the most we got in one day was 22. And that's another thing that could be looked at. If, if you're going to do a study like this, you should probably choose chickens that are all the exact same age because as they get older, the egg production drops off at, at like two years. When I did this, they were about a year and a half. So they were pretty much at the peak of their egg laying capability. So 
good point. If you do do this test again I, at the study, I would line up the boxes all together and make sure all the all the chickens are the same age. In fact, in the um, the pool study, all the chickens were at the same age that they did the enrichment on. So that is that is a really good point. That's Haley, by the way. <laughs> Angle. Oh, yes, sir. How are you? <laughs> I'm just curious. Do they not have like a preference, like um, you know, like people do? That you know, that's my room or whatever. I mean, yeah. have you seen before you started this study? It's just like totally random. It's totally random. Where? Yes. Wow. Yes. I mean, I, I had a chicken camera, which a lot of you've seen, in the in the chicken coop, so I could remote in and watch and watch what's going on in the coop to see who's in what box. Yeah. No. I mean, they like that bottom row for some reason. It's just lazy. Yes. Um, did you do anything to to leave the chickens to lay in the boxes, or did you just let them do no. what they wanted to do? No, they do what they want. Um, we've had them for, I guess, a year and a half, maybe two years almost. And chickens are pretty smart. They want to use the nesting box. I mean, there were some eggs that were laid not in the nesting boxes. I did not use that data because I just wanted to know curtains, no curtains, nesting boxes. But occasionally when they're young, they'll lay somewhere else and you have to train them. Like, this is where you gotta go lay. Like, like Stumpy, the one that lays in the house in the cat tree. I have taken her when she knocks on the door. I'll take her out to the coop, put her in a nesting box, shut the door and leave. And then she comes running back to the front door. So some of them are a little hard headed, but no, they, they're pretty natural. They go straight to the nesting box. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think that perhaps one of the reasons that they preferred the nest without the curtains is because when there are curtains that they maybe aren't able to see predators that might be around? I hadn't thought about that. I guess natural behavior would, would they would they would want they're supposed to want to lay where it's secluded mm -hmm. to keep their eggs away from predators. Mm -hmm. So I would think an open setting would probably dissuade them from laying there because it's more open predators. So I hadn't thought that. But, you know, they're domesticated too, so they're not out laying, as, well, most of them aren't laying in the woods. But, you know, I, I don't think, I don't personally think so. No. All right, nice to meet you.